Let's return to the COMBI-RX infection subset data for testing two proportions. We have our gender variable, and we'd like to know if the proportion of people reporting the infections is different by gender. In this situation, we want to begin, since we have already looked at the distribution of the demographic variables, we'd like to begin by looking at the distribution of the infection response variables. So I'm going to go to Analyze Distribution, and here I want to look at each of the infections. So I'm holding down the Command key in Mac, or the Control key in Word, and selecting each of my infection yes or no variables. And I'm going to press Y. So all seven of them are going to go in my Y, or you can do that individually. And from here then, I'm going to take a look at each of the frequencies. And what you'll notice here is I have ones, twos, and threes. And that means I've got three levels for the presence or absence of the infection. And it's not simply yes or no. It turns out there's also a third option for unsure. This is important to report the number of people that are unsure if they've had the infection. But in terms of testing the proportions yes or no, that third level will really cause some problems. For one thing, we don't know if the unsures are yeses or nos. And for another thing, you can see here that our observed values are quite small, and it's almost surely likely to lead us needing Fisher's exact tests to test all three levels. So if our question is just the comparison of yes, no, we would need to make a statement that we would exclude those people who were unsure whether or not they'd had the infection. It would be interesting to look at those who were sure versus not sure, but again, those would be very small numbers on the unsure. So we need to actually exclude the threes before we run the tests. So let's go ahead and focus on the mononucleosis variable, and we can see that we only have one missing. Now we could go back to our data and search for that one missing, or in jump, we can actually just take our arrow up here at the three, see to the left I've got the hand, and to the right I've got the arrow, and just click in that space. And you can see it's highlighted the three one. Again, I could also simply click on the three here under mononucleosis. Now you've noticed in the other areas that it's taken that one participant and pointed out where they were. It's interesting to note this one person actually knew about measles and knew about uh, the chicken pox and knew about scarlet fever, but was unsure about Epstein-Barr or unsure about the type of pneumonia. You can also see here back in the data set that I have one over here on the left, on the lower left, I have one row selected. I can go to the rows menu and go to next selected, and it will show me the participant here, number 129, that actually has the measles value of unsure. And we can actually go over to the measles variable here, and you can see, or excuse me, the mono variable over here, and you can see that they were unsure. So we have that person selected, and I want to go now into the rows menu, and I want to click exclude. And you will notice here that participant 129 now has a red exclusion sign or a no sign that we're used to seeing in terms of something like no smoking or no cell phones. 129 has been excluded. So now if I go back to my analyze distribution and mono, you can see that I now have only ones and twos. This is imperative in terms of doing the test for one versus two. We will need to note that this is out of 343 people because one participant answered unsure and they have been excluded. So now to test our two proportions, I want to make sure to report the overall proportion of yes, the overall proportion of no, the proportion of males and the proportion of females. But I also want to do a fit Y by X and I want to put my gender as my X and my mono status as my Y and press OK. 
From here, I get my mosaic plot and jump. The far right side shows me what the overall proportion of the one and the two are. And that is a one for yes and a two for no. So I could value label those if I wanted to, to be yes and no, that would be very helpful. If you'd like to know how to value label, you can then review the first midterm review video. But this shows me the overall proportion of those with a one. So as you can see here, that's 53%, 53.6 are red and 46.4 are blue. The proportion of females, you can then see this, the split of the red and the blue, and the proportion of males, you can see the split of the red and the v blue. It's very important for you to understand that this mosaic plot is simply for your edification. This is not a plot that should be reproduced in any output, nor should it be turned in for your homework or exams in this class. So I'm going to go ahead and close it by clicking on this little gray arrow. What we have of interest here is our contingency table. Females, males, mono yes, mono no. And we can pull the proportions that we need to from this table of 343 people. I could say of those that are female, of those that are female, so that I'm looking for a row proportion, and that's this bottom one right here, of those that are female, 52.5% indicated a history of mononucleosis. Of those that are male, 56.6% indicated a history of mono. Now, I could test a left-sided or right-sided, so I could test if this 52.5 is less than 56.6. I could test if 56.5 was less than 52.6 or 52.5, but of course that doesn't make any sense. Why would I test this to be less than that? So really my only options here are equal to or not equal to, or if females are less than males. Let's do the equal to or not equal to test. That's my likelihood ratio chi-square. So it is asking a null hypothesis of is my proportion of females with a history of mono the same as my proportion of males with a history of mono? And the answer to that question is no, based on this p-value. Now jump is very helpful if I wanted to actually look at the one-sided test. So if I wanted to test the 52.5 being less than 56.6, the Fisher's exact gives you all three and it will tell you that that p-value is 0.2841, or we could take this p-value and divide it by two, and that will give me, so 0 0.4890 divided by two, 2.2445 or 0.25 would be my one-sided p-value for female less than male, female less than male, if I was doing a one-sided test. My two-sided test, my two-sided test is this p-value, my one-sided test would be half of that p-value. Now, what if I wanted a difference of the proportions and a confidence interval on the difference? I can simply, under the large top red arrow, ask for a two-sample test for proportions. You can see that JUMP has done the females to males for a response of mono category of interest of one. You could flip it to be for two. Flip it to be for two. Um, and if you wanted to, if we wanted to look at the males versus females, then we could actually flip the order here and we could go into our column information. Let's do that column information, and now I'm going to do value ordering, and I want to put my female on the lower, on the last option, and press OK. And then if I redo my fit Y by X, gender and mono, and press OK, you can then see very quickly that we have identical results. Here's our chi-square values. 
but all that's changed is the order of our males to our females in the table. And then again, if we ask for the confidence bound to sample test for proportions, we can actually see now that we have a positive proportion difference here. So we can say that the difference in proportions is 4.1%. And then that difference would actually range from females, in fact, being greater than males by 7.5% to males being greater than females by 15.5%. And our 4.1% is in the middle here. So that's the confidence bound on our difference. The negative value I know is difficult to interpret, but since we know that it's males minus females, a minus 0.075, would mean that males was lower than females. So we estimate the difference to be 4.1% with the lower bound having females larger by 7.5 and the upper bound having males larger by 15.5. Our overall conclusion here is that there is no difference in the proportion of males and females that reported a history of mononucleosis in this